The next thing says, find the speed at which the ball was thrown. Have a look at your table, speed. What's that closely related to? Velocity, right? It's gonna be related to velocity. The difference is, velocity includes up or down, and speed doesn't, okay? So let's go ahead and try and work out speed. Because speed is connected to velocity, but it's like velocity when plus or minus doesn't matter, one of the ways we can do this is to apply absolute value signs to it. Because that's a way of saying I disregard whether it is positive or negative, right? It says when the ball was thrown. What time was that? Zero. At time zero, right? So this is where the ball starts going. So I'm going to say when t equals zero, and then I'm going to substitute into the right equation, which in this case is the absolute value of velocity, absolute value of v. So um, what's my velocity equation? 20 take away 10 lots of what? Zero. zero, that's the thing I'm substituting, right? So it's 20 take away zero, which is 20, right? Now, that's the number, but when you have a look, it says, like, tell me what the speed was. So that's why the very first thing we wrote down were the units that applied, right? Um, I rubbed it off already, you know, frequently we use kilometers per hour, but that's not what this question is. This question is? meters per second. So I'm going to conclude, this is really important, I'm going to say speed was 20 meters per second. Okay, so it's really important you conclude and use some actual words and the units that are relevant. Okay, what does part C ask? Have a look over it with me, bless you. Um, find when it uh, returns to the ground, it even sort of helps you out, that's when x equals zero, because that's our vertical axis, uh, and show that its speed there is equivalent, or equal rather, to the initial speed. Now we've actually, because we drew it, we already kind of know this, right? I can say from the graph, we know that x starts off at zero. When does it come back to x equals zero? At time equals four, right? So from the graph, um, what's the word? It says it returns to the ground Um, and normally we would say like at x equals something or something like that, but I'm going to say when time equals four. So after four seconds, right? Now how do I answer this next part? How do I show that its speed then is equal to the initial speed? How do I find this speed again? Yeah, I looked at the velocity function and I substituted in the specific time, which in that case was zero. Well this time I'm going to substitute a different time the landing time, right? Yeah, so I'm going to say when t equals 4, and again, we're asking about speed, not velocity, so I'm going to put some absolute value signs around v to indicate I'm doing speed, equals, uh, and I'm going to go straight back to my velocity equation. It's 20 take away 10 lots of what? 4, because that's the time I'm substituting in. Like so. So this is the absolute value of 20 take away 40. I'm going to get negative 20 in there. So you can see, oh great, this is speed because that's why I applied the absolute value signs and you can see that's equivalent. So this is um, 20 meters per second at landing, I guess we could say, or at return to ground. Okay, so it's the same. Great. Part D, we're on the home stretch, right? Find its maximum height above the ground and the time taken to reach this height. Now, I'm actually gonna suggest it's easier to answer that in reverse. Um, we wanna find a time that makes that maximum height. You can even see it on your graph, right? And then we will take that time and substitute it in. What does the time look like? Is your graph good enough to be able to just read it off? Four minutes of time T2. So number one, we're talking seconds. So four minutes is a long way off here, okay? Uh, secondly, 4 is here, if we're thinking about seconds, so I want something that corresponds to that spot, oh, right? That's going to be, t yeah, t equals 2, because parabolas have symmetry, right, the axis of symmetry is there. Um, it's worth noting that often you won't have a graph so nice and neat, um, you can't just read off symmetry of a cubic function, for example. So what would you have to do, by the way, if you were searching for this point, if you couldn't just look at it, you'd be looking for a stationary point, wouldn't you? Or more specifically, a turning point. So you're gonna to have to go to your derivatives and then try and solve, okay? All right, so let's go ahead. Let's take that time. When t equals two, I've got three equations, x, v, and a. Which one am I substituting into to answer this question? Look carefully, what's it asking? Yeah, this is gonna be the first equation, right? Because it says, 
um, find the maximum height. Now, these velocity acceleration equations don't tell you where you are, they tell you what's happening at those spots. I need my x equation, my displacement. So I'm gonna say when t equals to x equals, and let's do the substitution, okay? Uh, 20 lots of two, take away five lots of two squared. Anyone help me out? What's the next line gonna be? 40, take away five lots of four, which is 20. Okay, now this number is the same, but because I've put it into a different equation than previously, it means something different, right? This means it's 20 meters high, 20 meters above the ground, right? So therefore, I would say highest point is 20 meters above the ground. And please, please, use words like this, which describe, like your 20 meters, what is it? Um, it might not be above the ground, it might be like from the top of a building, right? Or it might be below a cliff, or it could be anything. It is never assumed. <laughs> it is never ever assumed, which is why I'm trying to make a big deal out of it. Okay, you must always state what's going on. Last question. I can't even remember what it says by this point. Uh, it says, find the acceleration at the top of the flight um, and explain why, let's get to that explain stuff after we find the first part. Um, what is the acceleration at the top? Um, well, we actually know acceleration. Have a look at your graph down here. Acceleration is constant. It's always this number, right? So I can say part E, go down a bit. Part E, A is going to always be equal to negative 10. I actually don't care what value of T it is, but if I had some other acceleration equation, I'd say substitute T equals two into there and you get some value, okay? Now, what does this mean? I haven't actually answered the question, right? I would say therefore acceleration is, now, pause, um, displacement units are meters. Velocity units are meters per second. What are acceleration units? Meters per second squared. Yeah, so the physics people have encountered this before, but for those of you who can't remember, right, you're still measuring in meters, you're still measuring in seconds, but because you're measuring velocity, in seconds, and that's meters per second, it's meters per second per second? And the way we write that is um, 10 meters per second squared, or occasionally you'll see this with a negative index. 10 meters per second with a negative two. You will equally frequently see those kinds of notation used, okay? Um, or you might even hear them say 10 meters per second per second. Um, by the way, 10 meters per second per second, that's not a number that was plucked out of thin air, this thing got thrown up and then it came back down. What was the, the thing acting on the ball that brought it back down to the ground? Gravity, Gravity which is roughly 9.8 meters per second per second, and you'll see 10 frequently used. Now the acceleration is 10 meters per second per second. Which way, up or down? Look carefully, look carefully what this graph tells me, right? That negative means downward, right? So I have to say that. It's 10 meters per second per second in the downward direction. Question. Is that like negative two? This negative two right here? Yeah. Yep. Um, what's the difference between writing? Yeah, the difference between these is um, they're different ways of saying the same thing. Like that negative index is a way to divide, right? Um, so it's this per meters per second. The per actually means division, right? So I can use a negative index to mean that. Okay. Um, I've run out of space, but we have one last question to answer. It says. Explain why the acceleration can be non-zero, it's, it's not zero, it's 10 in the downward direction, um, when the ball is stationary, like the ball's not moving. How can there be acceleration when the ball's not going anywhere? Stationary point. Hmm. Now, um, you might hear this idea of, like we talked about the word deceleration before, I'm consciously not gonna use that because it, it, it's actually very confusing, um, but there is, like, to take the idea here, the ball was slowing down, right? It was slowing down, it was, it, 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 we threw it up, okay? It slowed down until it got to that point, but guess what? It's still changing velocity, right? Uh, it's slowing down and then it starts speeding up, I guess, back toward the ground, but the whole point is go back to your table, right? Acceleration is, remember, any change in velocity, any change, positive or negative, slowing, uh, speeding up, slowing down, because there's a change in velocity, that means, as the graph tells us, 
there is acceleration and it's not zero. Okay? Um, and like you guys told me before, it's gravity in this case. All the calculus stuff that you're doing here is actually fairly rudimentary. It's like, oh, you won't get really crazy weirdo functions. Um, you differentiate it once, you differentiate again, but there's a lot of interpretation, extra language, which you have to say, oh, what does that mean when they say initially? It means time equals zero, right? What does it mean when they say, you know, this direction or that direction? You have to interpret the sign, whether it's positive or negative, okay? 